Order. Question number 12, Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues and Arts. Does she agree with the statement made by GNS senior scientist Nancy Bertler that sea level rise of 30 centimetres in 30 years is incredibly certain and the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment's analysis that a 30 centimetre rise would result in one in 100 year water levels in Wellington happening every year? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, in part, yes, but I would point out that even the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment and the scientist mentioned in the question disagree. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Would she discourage a first home buyer from taking out a 30-year mortgage today on a home in a low-lying coastal area given the risks facing such properties over the next 30 years? It's a good question. Uh, the Mr. Honourable Speaker, Paula Bennett. Um, it would depend on where it is, what the mitigation happens over the next 30 years and what adaptation local councils are taking responsibility for. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Does she believe that councils are giving home buyers enough information on the effects that rising sea levels may have on future property values in areas like the south coast of Wellington, South Dunedin and Napier's low-lying suburbs? Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Paula uh, Not consistently, no. I don't think they're giving enough information. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. When rising sea levels cause worse flooding in coastal communities, leaving some homes uninsurable, will the government be ready and willing to step in and compensate homeowners as it did with homeowners who were affected in the red zone after the Canterbury earthquakes? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, that's not something that we've been looking at at the moment, so I don't have an answer to it, but it's not in our reckoning. I think we've got a big programme of work to do, um, particularly um, after signing the Paris Agreement and then working towards what ratification actually looks like. And I'm encouraging, really, to look at a task force that includes uh, business, NGOs, academics, agriculture, and then bring the public along as well so that we can seriously look at how we not only meet our obligations as far as a 2030 target, but also bend that curve and become more of a lower emission economy. So that is the target, and I think if we get that sort of stuff right, we can start addressing some of the concerns as the, as the member raises. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. What action has she taken, if any, to support her statement that New Zealand needs, and I quote, a longer term, carefully developed plan on the financial implications from rising seas? Mr Speaker, the Honourable well, as I Bennett. just outlined, um, I've been meeting with and talking with a lot of different groups, um, particularly around businesses uh, and um, NGO groups and others. So I think what our focus needs to be now is what do we get, what, who do we get together over the next couple of months to then work over a much longer term, and I think beyond 2030, to look at how we lower our emissions in New Zealand. And so um, we're still working out exactly what that looks like, what the right forum, uh, what, what the right forum is, um, but we are really keen to see that be an in-depth process that is very transparent and open. Supplementary. Supplementary question, David Seymour. Does the Minister believe that managing risk from sea level rise is the responsibility of central government, local government or property owners? Oh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Um, in some context, all of the above. And that concludes questions for oral answer. I have received a letter from Andrew Little seeking to debate Understanding Order 389.